Oh, good morning, fam. Matt August, Legends of Aesthetics.com, checking in. It's about 10 a.m. in the morning. I just woke up. Messy bed and everything. Uh, first thing I usually do in the morning is I'll just make my bed. I find that as long as I make my bed, or if at least I make my bed, I've done something right. I've done something right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then usually the first thing I do after that is I'll just start drinking tons of water. Go to the bathroom, drink tons of water, and drink some Gatorade since I'm going to be hitting the gym pretty soon. Get a little bit of quick carbs in me. Uh, also, since I work out fast in the morning. Next up for me is uh, feeding this boy over here. Max, come on. Let's go eat. Good morning, buddy. So before I head off to the gym, I'll uh, if I'm not going to Chipotle today, what I'll do is I'll get my post-workout meal uh, prepared before I leave the gym. And that just consists of getting the rice cooker ready. What I'll do is I'll throw in uh, about 70 grams of lentils right there. And 70 grams of lentils, it's about 20 grams of protein. It's like 40 carbs and about 22 grams of fiber. 22 grams of fiber. So I'll toss that in there and like pretty much zero fat, I'm pretty sure. So toss that in there and I'll do about 130 grams of rice. Not exactly sure how much carbs that comes out to, but it's a decent amount. So 130 grams of rice, about 70 or so grams of lentils. Just wash it through a few times and then I put it inside the rice cooker and it usually takes about an hour. So by the time I come back, it's been done for an hour. So yeah, um, that's a lot of unprocessed food right there. Once this is done cooking, it's a lot of fiber as well. And uh, it makes up a decent chunk of my, like anywhere between 60 to 90% uh, unprocessed, um, clean food for the day. Uh, that's just my general guideline. Just get my two fruits, two vegetables, 60 to 90, somewhere between there, uh, percent in terms of unprocessed slash whole foods. Hit my uh, protein and be somewhere within my caloric goal. And that's kind of my off season style of doing things. I'm not actually like putting every single thing into my fitness pal. I'm really just, um, going by feel in a way. I've tracked macros for so long that, you know, I'm not perfect. There's people that are way better than me, but <clears throat> once you track macros for three years plus, three, four years or whatever, however long it's been, uh, you kind of become somewhat of a wizard, somewhat of a wizard. Some people more Gandalfy than others, but you kind of really get a good feel for how much you're consuming. Um, just in your head, you kind of combine your appetite uh, with how much you think you ate and you have a good idea of like, oh shit, it's nighttime, I should probably eat X amount more because I'm probably missing X amount of fats or carbs or proteins or whatever. And uh, honestly, just don't let it stress me too much. And I've been doing a pretty good job because the scale has been going up steadily at around the rate that I want it to, somewhere between one and two pounds a month. So, yeah. Glutes of Peace, brought to you by Gymshark, www.gymshark.com. Uh, thank you for the awesome pants that I'm wearing, and that I wear to all of my leg days. So today's workout, um, I'm showing you the first, third, and fifth set of deadlifts. I'm using 415. Uh, I ended up doing five sets of seven. Uh, I wanted to go beltless on these, but uh, on my second set, I actually had a trainer really close to me working with an elderly man and I didn't want to start any issues so I was like alright I'm gonna have to let the I'm gonna have to let the weight down a little you know kinda soft so that's why I put my belt on so that uh, I wouldn't accidentally uh, lower the weight too fast which if I had my way I'd lower that shit real fast <laughs> um, not spend too much energy on these on these negatives but you know I had to do what I had to do so Wore the belt on sets two to five. Uh, I will be increasing my training maxes after each um, cycle of about five weeks. Currently 550 is the training max that I'm working off of for sumo deadlift, even though I'm pretty damn sure my max is actually higher than that. Um, so I'll be adding 10 pounds every five weeks or so to that. And for my upper body lifts, I'll be adding five pounds every uh, time I cycle all the way through. And I kind of like the way, I, I really enjoy the way I'm doing it. And it's like, why don't I just do Wendler? Uh, the reason why I like this is, um, 
I'm j uh, f with Wendler, you're working with 85%, 90%, or 95% for uh, of the training max. And you, you pretty much just kind of go all out. So you hit like a high uh, RP 9 to 10. Um, and then you drop the weight normally to 50, 60% for 5, 6 to 10. Or you just do other accessory work. But with the way I'm doing it right now, I am working with uh, percentages between 75 and 85%. But overall, more volume around that load, around that weight. So I definitely like it like this uh, compared to uh, what I was doing with Wendler. All right, back home. Max over there said hi to me. All right, guys, back home. Sipping a protein shake, 50 grams of protein on the way home. Um, I like to take care of a banana or two as well, uh, especially if they're starting to get ripe. And while... Um, while I'm uh, cooking up the vegetables that I'm gonna eat for, or with the, uh, the lentils, rice, whatever meat source I choose, whether it's some sort of like egg, egg substitute, uh, tuna, fresh chicken, canned chicken, I'll put all that shit together and I'll either add uh, like teriyaki sauce um, with some soy sauce with a little bit of barbecue sauce or I'll put in salsa and then that's the, the meal right there for my post-workout. Uh, how important is the timing of my post-workout meal to me? How important is it? Well, nowadays I don't let it stress me. I don't let it um, ruin my day if, you know, my post-workout meal is like an hour, two hours, three hours after my post, uh, after my workout. Uh, obviously, I want it to be as soon after my workout as possible. And depending on the last time I got food in my system, protein, carbs, um, it, it, Depending on how long ago it was that my last meal was, that's kind of the emphasis of how soon I'm trying to get, you know, this post-workout meal in. Uh, well, no matter what happens, like I don't kill myself, I don't try to stress myself out, and I don't punish myself. I don't say "bad boy, Matt," like I used to, perhaps in the past, like years and years ago, uh, when I used to think that the rules were concrete in terms of like what foods you ate, how often, and so on. You know, it caused a lot of stress up here, emotionally and mentally, and just, um, and that's not good for you, not good for you at all. Not at all. So, um, of course, if I uh, train fasted in the morning, I like to get my food in pretty much as quickly as possible after that, my, after that uh, workout. Um, that's why I keep protein powder in my car, and sometimes even a carb source, maybe I'll bring a banana with me and I'll eat that on the way home. Uh, but look, for me personally, if it's, if it's a while after my workout, not a huge deal. Especially if I ate uh, before the workout, then it's even less of a big deal. If I train fasted, it's more of a big deal to get food in quicker after my workout. For me, at the end of the day, I know that what matters most is the total quantity of fat, carb, protein that I take in that is the most important thing. Of course, the calories that I take in is at the top. Um, break, uh, the next level is the macros that I take in. And way down the list is the, uh, the timing of the nutrients and so on. Except for when it comes to your pre-workout, oh, excuse me, except when it comes to timing um, in regards to your workout. Uh, if, you know, if for, like for me, for example, um, depending on how many carbs it is, how much total food it is, like for me to eat like some a big breakfast before my workout, uh, I really need quite a bit of time to let that digest. Personally, I can't. Like I know a lot of people who can eat uh, the same size meal that I would eat for breakfast, and they could work out 30 minutes uh, to an hour after that meal. Whereas I need one and a half to three hours for me to feel right. You know, for me to feel like okay, you know, it's it's mostly digested. Uh, you know, there's not tons of food in my stomach. Otherwise, I just feel like crap during my workout. So that's what, that is probably the most important um, uh, meal in terms of meal timing. It's whether you have any pre-workout meal or when your pre-workout meal is uh, in, in reference to the actual workout. You gotta find the level of um, total nutrients uh, as well as the timing um, after, uh, between the meal and the workout that really fits you best. Uh, for some people, maybe it's just 25 grams of carbs uh, 30 minutes before the workout. For some people, maybe it's 50 grams of carbs 
uh, an hour before the workout. Um, you have a lot of days on this planet to experiment and try to find what works best for you. Uh, personally for me, and you guys probably know this if you see my videos for a while, uh, if I'm in a caloric surplus uh, phase of my life, I like to train fasted, well mostly fasted, like as soon as I wake up, I'll drink lots of water, but I'll also sip on Gatorade um, on my way to the gym and throughout my gym session. So that's kind of like my fasted uh, style of training. In the past I used to just train uh, with nothing really in me at all. But I like to get some Gatorade nowadays. I've noticed that I really enjoy that. And when I'm cutting, when I'm on a caloric deficit type phase, I do like to get a, a um, pre-workout meal in. And like I said, quite a bit of time between that, I'm sorry, I'm running around. Quite a bit of time be between that pre-workout meal and that workout, also depending on how much food it is. So I have a good gauge of, okay, if I eat this much food while I'm cutting uh, as my pre-workout meal or as my breakfast, I'm like, okay, this many carbs in this form, I probably need X amount of time. So I recommend you try to find the amount of time, the amount of carbs, the amount of total food that works best for you, whether you're bulking, whether you're cutting, there's two different, you know, two different main phases of, of your nutrition uh, cycle or whatever you want to call it. Uh, find all of that out for yourself uh, and it will really aid you in your training. And currently I've really found what works best uh, for me. And of course too, it's not just the total, for me it's not just the total amount of uh, carbs or total amount of nutrients, it also matters like what form, what form. For example, if I have, uh, you know, let's just throw some numbers out there, say I'm in my uh, caloric surplus phase, if I have 75 grams of carbs in the form of uh, Gatorades, or dextrose or whatever, I'm gonna need a lot less time, I'm gonna feel, at least feel like I need performance wise, a lot less time to digest that uh, when it comes to working out compared to if I'm eating uh, 75 grams of carbs of like sweet potato. But that's not usually my breakfast anyway. Usually if I eat breakfast when I'm cutting, it's like cereal of some sort or a combination of cereals. Usually if I have that, I'm gonna need, a, I'm gonna need more time compared to say liquid carbs. Uh, so that's just another another little uh, thing when it comes to me and how I eat. Yeah. Hopefully this makes sense for you guys. I'm not trying to confuse you. <laughs> Quick summary of what I just said. Usually for most people you're either bulking or cutting. Uh, try to find the right amounts of food for your pre-workout. If any food before your workout, try to find the right amounts of food as well as the, the perfect timing of that food um, before your workout. Uh, so quantity of total nutrients, types of foods, uh, which actual foods, as well as the timing. Try to figure that out. You have so many days on this planet to figure it out. So just start experimenting and find what works best for you. Okay guys, so I'm finishing up the day. I'm gonna kind of sum things up uh, today and you know how I normally do things in terms of what I eat. And uh, oh, sorry, I have that. Um, here I have a. Uh, Chipotle burrito, it's like a three pound, 1.9 ounce burrito. It's about 10 o'clock at night. I usually go to bed lately around one or two, sometimes three uh, a.m. in the morning, usually around two a.m. in the morning. So uh, if it's 10 p.m., try to go to bed at two a.m., about four hours, though it's probably gonna take me an hour to eat this. So we're probably looking at three hours by the time I finish eating this and the time I go to bed. I try not to eat too late uh, in the day, not because of meal timing, this and that, or the 6 p.m. haunting. Honestly, I, I try to cap things off like, I try and I get all my food in, you know, one or two hours at least uh, before I go to bed simply because I find it easier to go to bed when there's not tons of food in my stomach. And sometimes I just, I don't like trying to go to bed with lots of food in my stomach. Sometimes it's just, I just don't like it. It's, it's kind of uncomfortable. Plus sometimes I'll wake up feeling slightly uncomfortable compared to when I give myself more time for the food to digest. And plus, sometimes, you know, if I eat too late in the day, it kind of messes up my sleep cycle because it makes it harder for me to sleep, and I go to bed later, and just messes things up. Uh, so, if I had to guesstimate the macros for today of everything, and that includes the Gatorades when I woke up, um, protein shake on my way home, two bananas throughout the day, an apple, um, the, uh, the rice dish that I had with the rice, lentils, green beans, tuna, and the sauces. And this meal here with this 
big ass burrito and this bowl of uh, veggies right here, I probably give myself an estimated around around 60 to 65 grams of fat, plus or minus 10, who knows. Uh, so it could be between 55 and 75 grams of fat, I'll just say. Uh, simply because this right here is the main source of fat. Uh, normally, um, a double wrap burrito, if it's not extra everything, will have around 40 grams of fat based on the nutrition on the website and my fitness pal and whatnot. Now, let me just double check real quick. Yeah, normally a, a standard size double wrap burrito will have about 40 grams of fat, 160 carbs, and 68 grams of protein. But this is a super sized burrito, way, 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 way larger than a regular size one. So, uh, and they also give me extra cheese, so I'm probably looking at anywhere between 15 to 25 more grams of fat on top of that. So, that's kind of why I'm estimating that. I'm probably taking in 65 plus or minus 10 grams of fat today, total. Um, around 450 to 500 carbs, right around there and uh, 225 to 235 grams of protein since I had two shakes, two cans of tuna, and this burrito. So probably around 235 to 240 grams of protein. Um, kind of went low on the fat today, to be honest, um, since I only took in around 65-ish, plus or minus, a little bit. Um, normally I try to get like 75 to 100 grams of fat in, which, uh, which is cool because I went a little bit over what I normally like to get in terms of protein. I like to get 200 to 225, and I got like 235, 240. And I also went a little bit above where I like to get my carbs. I usually like to get like 400 to 450, but I got like 450 to 500. So to be honest, the caloric goal is pretty close to where I normally get it, and I'm not too off in terms of protein. So it... I'm pretty cool with that. And another thing is I really don't even like worry about these things too much, especially this like in this much into like an off season for me. As long as my gym performance is increasing and increasing and increasing on a regular basis, you know, also assuming that my programming is intelligent, my form is intelligent, and uh, my effort and motivation is up there, and I'm not, you know, overtraining and kill myself. Um, and the scale is going up slowly between one and two pounds a month, I'm doing pretty good. And you also can't forget that today I had three servings of fruit and around five to six servings of vegetables. This right here is like two servings of spinach with a serving of green or a serving of carrots, so that's like about three. And then earlier I had between two and three uh, servings of green beans. We'll just say two. So I had about five servings of vegetables today, three fruits, um, Fiber-wise, I had a shitload of fiber. Um, I had about, oh my gosh, I had like 20, um, 20 grams of fiber just with the uh, Asian rice stuff. I had fiber with the apple and a um, little bit of bananas. And I have plenty more right here, so uh, I had a lot of fiber. And yeah, that's basically my day, how I did things today in terms of nutrition. And most of the time, you know, these are the things I usually aim for, guys, in terms of like super off season. I'm not in a mode where I'm super worried about my body composition. I'm really just kind of in this general place in terms of body composition. Just don't let yourself get fat quickly. That's it. Keep that weight gain progress um, slow and steady. One to two pounds a month. As long as I'm increasing strength on my lifts and all these other things. Doing pretty good two plus servings of fruits, two plus servings of vegetables, and I'm doing good. I'm weighing in around a hundred and, um, a hundred and eighty, eight hundred and eighty-nine. I'm, I'm 189, maybe 189 and a half right now. And this is just my genetics of, uh, ab genetics that I have that I don't have like tons of fat here compared to everywhere else. Like my back has plenty of fat. Um, and that's how I'm currently, uh, doing things, guys. Yeah, that's basically it. <sighs> Macros. I, uh, super off season, hit my protein goal, somewhere near the caloric goal. 
without being super high in fats, crazy low in carbs, or crazy high in fats, I'm excuse me, crazy high in carbs, super low in fats, try to have a decent balance. For me, it's 75 to 100 grams of fat, 400 450 carbs, 200 to 225 grams of protein. Um, decent amount of fiber. For me personally, I like between 35 and 75 grams of fiber a day. Somewhere in there is pretty cool with me. You know, and that's it. Cool. Oh, anyways, guys, had a long day. Um, gotta go finish this burrito now. And I hope everyone has a really good night.